Okay, so let's talk about random forests or decision forests. So the idea of this algorithm came from Tincom Ho and later was made, in, made bigger um, by Leo Breiman. Now, random forests are kind of a, uh, one of the big, big ones. They're black box. Uh, nobody knows exactly how to explain the predictions. They're very powerful. You know, it's one of those algorithms. And it uses this very simple, simple but powerful idea that if you have many slightly different models um, and you average them all together, then they tend to reduce the variance of the predictions that you're getting. And it comes from this idea of bagging, which is also um, which stands for bootstrap aggregating. And the idea with bagging is that you take your data set and you sample endpoints from the training set with replacement, and you grow a tree from them. And you do this a whole bunch of times. And then if you average the trees all together then um, that will give you um, a, a prediction that's sort of more reliable than one tree alone by itself. Okay, and so when you're sampling with replacement, that means you could sample the same data point multiple times in your, in your data set that you create the tree from. And it can also mean that you leave out some of the training set when you create the tree. You do, so, so you have these like slightly different data sets and, and then, then when you build these trees from them, they're all, the trees are all different from each other. Okay, so let's go back to this example of predicting whether a, a, a customer will wait for a table at a restaurant um, given these various features. And now let's say that we built three trees from our uh, you know, bootstrap resamples and um, we have a prediction we wanna make for some customers who walked into Blue Corn Cafe and uh, here are the features. So blue corn is not that expensive, but it's full. There's customers everywhere. There's a five to 15 minute wait. The customer doesn't have any plans and there's other options nearby because blue corn is on a block with lots of restaurants. Okay, so the first thing we ask uh, for the first tree, the one all the way uh, on the left is um, whether the restaurant is crowded and it is full. So we go to the right. And then um, does the customer have other plans? No, they don't. And the price is two dollar signs. And so we say, yes, the customer would wait. And then for the second tree, we just ask what the wait time is. It's five to 15 minutes. So we say, yeah, the customer's going to wait for a table. But for the third tree, um, the restaurant's crowded. They have other options and it's blue corn, so they won't wait. So um, these trees differ in their opinions and we're going to take the majority vote. And so this is the same thing as, you know, if you go to the doctor and the doctor says, oh, you need surgery. And you think to yourself, hmm, I'm going to go ask a second, get a second opinion. So then you ask like 10, you know, 10 doctors, right? That'd be great. That's more than usually people ask two or three doctors. But what if you could ask 10 doctors and all the doctors have slightly different experience and they have different uh, training and so on. So, um, you know, the idea is that if you ask all of these doctors, then um, you'll get a, a, a lower variance prediction than you would if you just asked one. Okay. So decision for us, um, for a whole bunch of iteration, each, for each iteration, you draw a bootstrap sample of size N from the training data, you grow a tree, and you use an interesting splitting procedure, okay? So the splitting procedure goes like this. For each split, you choose only a subset of features that you're willing to consider for that split. And you evaluate the split, splitting criteria on all of those M features, not all P of them, just M of them. And then you split on the best one. And then if you realize that you only have a small amount of data, uh, in your leaf, then you, you don't split it anymore, okay? So this, this seems like it would be uh, fairly overfitted and that's okay because remember, we're gonna average them all together at the end. Okay, so at the end you output all the trees and you use either the majority vote for classification or the average for regression as your final predictive model. Okay, great. So to, to predict on a new observation, use the majority vote. All right, so let's just do that again. So there are our features from our restaurant example. Uh, we have our data and we're trying to figure out what to split on and we choose just a subset of the features. We pick one of them. Uh, I, I didn't actually do the computation, I'm guilty of that. Um, but let's say that it was precipitation and we put that feature at the top. We split on that. And then for this uh, split, we would consider maybe a different set of features and then we evaluate all of them and we pick the best one and we split on that. Okay, and then we do this, we create a whole bunch of trees, they're all overfitted to the data, um, and, and, and that's our, that was our goal there. Okay, and we, we average or take the majority vote of the prediction. Okay, so the nice things about, the, the kind of key ideas here are that you're using the, the bootstrap resamples to make sure these trees are different from each other, 
And then also within each tree, you're sort of restricting which features the tree can use. And so that also um, makes each of these trees different from the, from the others. And there's no pruning, which um, makes the trees fit the data more tightly. And this reduces bias, right? Because you, you can actually fit the data really, really well. Uh, and, and so even if there's something kooky in the data, um, all of these trees might find that thing. Um, and, and, the, and then you'd make correct predictions in that area of the space. Okay, so for regression, the algorithm is the same. The only difference is that you're using the average vote rather than the majority vote. The advantages of decision force, they're a very complex and powerful prediction tool. These models are highly nonlinear. Uh, another advantage of random forest is that they come with a really nice notion of variable, into, variable importance, which I'll give another video on. The disadvantage, of course, is that they're black box models because they're, you're averaging together a huge number of overfitted trees. And I will warn you that the R package for random forest actually tends to overfit. Um, I've had a number of students tell me over the years that they've had trouble with random forest because it overfits. And, but there are ways to tune it to prevent it from overfitting. It's just not that easy to figure out how to do it. And also, it's slow because for every split you make, you have to choose, a, a, for every split, for every tree, you have to evaluate all of the M uh, features that you're going to split on. And doing that takes a very long time. So because, you know, because these trees are so big and you're producing so many of them, and for each split, you have to do an evaluation of all the different features. It just tends to be fairly slow. Okay, so the next video is gonna be on the variable importance for um, random forest, but also for other algorithms.